Joining us here at Post 9 exclusively is Accenture Chair and CEO Julie Sweet. Welcome back. It's good to see you, Julie. Great. Thanks, Sarah. Great to be back. The bookings miss is getting some focus this morning, even though the overall numbers beat. Is that a reflection of weaker demand? There's a lot to be excited about this quarter in bookings. We had uh, 26 clients with bookings over 100 million. Really what you saw on the booking side was the smaller deals. So clients are prioritizing big transformation deals, which is our strength, and a little more cautious. So existing projects being extended, but some of the smaller deals not starting. And we did see that go into Europe and growth markets. So it was lower than expected, but so much going on in terms of Gen AI, um, the building of the digital core. So a lot to be excited generally um, in this sector. Right. So that, that's the whole question now is typically during downturns, IT spending gets pulled back. But now we're bumping up against this AI cycle. So how much is that offsetting what would normally be a weaker period? Well, your first clue is we just announced last week $3 billion in investment, right, which is a sign of the opportunity that we see. And in fact, the interest in Gen AI has focused clients even more on what we've been saying for a couple of years. All strategies lead to technology. You cannot use uh, AI unless you have data. We just did a survey that 97 percent of executives thinks Gen AI will transform their industry and company. But over half said data is the big challenge. And so we see a huge opportunity in continuing to transform the digital core, move people to the cloud, get their data accessible. Uh, and we've also seen an opportunity in Gen AI itself. We just have done 100 projects that we've sold in the last four months, which is about 100 million in sales. So it's small. The bigger opportunity in the near term is going to be getting companies ready. So what do you do? For, what, what are your services in that chain of helping companies get more efficient with AI? Sure. So um, the first thing we do is the business case. So one of the big things is Gen AI is more expensive. It's going to come down over time. But, you know, where do you use AI? What's the return on it? How do you pick the architecture? And then really importantly, it's only technology. It doesn't have an impact until you change the processes. So, for example, we're working with an insurance company, Mitsui Insurance Company, if you have a car accident, right, you need to call in. They're using Gen AI in their internal operations to get information faster to the customer. That increases customer service. But that requires both the technology and a totally different way of responding to customers. But, you know, cost uh, is still sort of an unknown, isn't it, to a certain extent for many of these businesses, as are use cases. I guess they're connected to some extent. How long until you have a clearer sense as to exactly what is going to be used, what it's going to cost, and how it's going to further the, uh, these businesses? David, this is moving really fast. You have great companies investing billions of dollars. So I think that will become clear. Literally, it's more like weeks and months, not years. We see that, that Gen AI will go faster than the cloud. So it's kind of at the same place the cloud was a decade ago. But we believe that the embracing of really all forms of AI will go much faster. The biggest challenge is most companies aren't ready to use AI. They've got to continue the move to the cloud, they need to put in the cloud-based platforms, and they need to change new ways of working. Talent, big opportunity for Accenture, because our clients really need help in rewiring and upskilling their people.